Okay, hello, I'm Paul DeVitas. I'm a design engineer here at Tower Source Global. I've worked for the Pennsylvania Crusher brand of Tower Source for the last 35 years, and in that time, I've worked on all of our Crusher product lines, including today's topic, which is jaw crushers. This slide shows two jaw crushers because there are two distinct styles of jaw crushers, one being the double toggle, which is shown on the left, the other the over, is the overhead eccentric, shown on the right. Jaw crushers have been manufactured by the PCC brand of Tower Source since about 1960. We began making uh, the double toggle style units through an agreement with QCAN, which is a manufacturer in California, where they were a manufacturer in California. We then began making the overhead eccentric style units in the mid-80s when we acquired the KBS brand of units. The first style of jaw crusher I want to talk about is the double toggle. The design of the double toggle jaw, uh, it, 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 what makes it unique is, is that the swing jaw is hinged at the top. And this support point is only that, it's only a hinge shaft. The eccentric shaft and all jaw crushers of any, any style have, a, have some sort of an eccentric motion. The eccentric shaft is mounted toward the back in the middle to low position. There's a flywheel mounted onto the eccentric shaft. You can see it in the background in this view. The flywheel is driven by an electric motor through a V-belt drive turning the eccentric shaft. As the eccentric rotates, it pushes down on the pitman, which in turn flattens the angle between the two toggles. Since the rear toggle is pivoting against the frame, the front toggle pushes on the swing jaw, closing the gap between the two jaw plates. The stroke glance at the swing jaw is not far, it's usually anywhere from a half to a half inch to an inch, depending on the size of the unit. The typical speed of this jaw is somewhere around 370 RPM. Larger units run slower, somewhere around 300 RPM. All crushers use at least one method of reduction. Some use more than one. The four methods of reduction available are compression, shearing, impact, and attrition. The method of, of reduction used in a double toggle jaw is compression. Because the toggles are, toggles are mounted low in relation to the swing jaw and far from the hinge point, it is virtually a straight line motion. This type of motion gives a straight compressive force with low abrasion. Jaw plates. There, there are three styles jaw plates used depending on the application. They are cullet, corrugated, and smooth. The corrugated and smooth plates are typically used on various ore applications. The plates shown here are the cullet plates. Cullet plates are used for crushing glass, and they have a curvature in them. You can see a belly shape in there, uh, and this curvature helps to prevent slabby glass cullet from falling straight through the crusher without it being crushed. The product adjustment where the output size from a jaw crusher is made on the stationary side, a uh, stationary jaw side of the machine. This is done by adding or removing shims at the bottom support of the stationary jaw. This opens or closes the opening to get the desired output size. The pitman and toggle mechanism require an oil bath lubrication. This picture here shows the interior of the reservoir where these components are in operation. Towards the top of the picture, you can see oil streams coming down from the spray bar. The oil comes down onto the eccentric shaft and lubricates all the components and mating faces as it flows downward. The oil is then recirculated through the loop system. This picture here shows the loop system on a small jaw crusher about to be shipped out from our shop. The loop system being the components on the outside, the complete loop system in uh, is included with the jaw and has all the necessary components to operate properly, including the pump, filter, flow switch, oil pressure gauge, and so on. The pumps are uh, shaft driven, so there's no other external power that's required. This is, uh, this is another double toggle jaw being shipped out from our shop. Again, you can see the uh, lube system there on the side. So, so far everything I've talked about has been on the double toggle style jaw. 
So let's discuss the other style, which is the overhead eccentric jaw. This jaw, as uh, shown in this picture, is one that's been in operation since 1986 at a silver mine in Nevada. As I said earlier uh, about the double toggle style, they're unique in their design in that they have the eccentric shaft mounted behind the swing jaw and have a hinge shaft that the jaw is supported from. In an overhead eccentric jaw, the eccentric shaft is mounted at the top, and it also acts as the hinge shaft supporting the added, uh, supporting the weight of the swing jaw. Um, something I want to clarify here, I just want to go back to the first slide to um, just compare these two uh, to reiterate what I said. That is about the, um, where the flywheel is mounted. Now here is the flywheel on a double toggle. And you can see that it's mounted here is the, the eccentric shaft. The eccentric shaft is mounted low and behind the swing jaw. On the overhead eccentric style, here is the flywheel. This is the eccentric shaft. Again, the eccentric shaft is acting as the hinge point and the flywheel is loaded, located towards the top. So that's the main characteristic that's different between these two styles of jaws. Now let me go back to where I was here. So the toggle assembly. The bottom of the swing jaw is held in place by the toggle assembly, which is made up by the toggle, which is the S-shaped piece shown here in red. It is free to pivot and also and uh, it allows the jaw to move. There's the shims. Adjustment to the opening at the bottom of the jaw is made by adding or removing shims behind the toggles as required. The adjustment rod, this is used for pushing the swing jaw into the closed position for adding or removing shims. And as an option, we can supply this as a hydraulic adjustment. The whole back rod assembly, this whole toggle arrangement is held tight by the spring-loaded hold back rod, which allows the motion required for crushing, but keeps the parts tight enough for the assembly. So overall, the, as compared to a double toggle, these units are much simpler in design as far as the toggle assembly. Uh, also, they don't require any lubrication system where the double toggle does. However, these units, do have a rather elaborate eccentric shaft assembly. Uh, this assembly consists of a series of components including four roller bearings and six labyrinth seal assemblies, and this is all located at the top of the swing jaw. Another big difference in this style of jaw is the crushing action. As I said earlier, the double toggle style jaw uses compression. However, because the eccentric shaft is mounted directly through the swing jaw on an overhead style, the motion at the bottom of the swing jaw is elliptical. So the crushing action is both compression and attrition. Because of the attrition component in these machines, they're generally used on a softer ore such as limestone, whereas crushing highly abrasive materials such as glass, the double toggle is the preferred design. However, double toggles are also used to crush things like limestone. This picture is a screenshot from a video that I have of an overhead eccentric unit operating in a limestone quarry up in uh, upstate New York. Uh, this is looking directly down into the machine. You can see a large piece of limestone between the two jaw plates. A second or two later, you can see the limestone beginning to break. As the material gets further down, more crushing occurs until the material is brought down to the desired size. This particular unit was set to about an 8-inch output. And then finally, the, the product is taken away at the discharge belt. Jaws of any style uh, generally produce minimal fines. The applications and typical data of our jaws Typical speeds these units run at ranges between 300 and 390 RPM for the double toggle and 200 to 300 RPM for the overhead. 
We're able to get as high as a seven to one reduction ratio with either style of jaw, and our largest units can handle feed sizes up to 38 inches. The sizes we produce in the double toggle uh, style, they range from as small as a nine by 16 to as large as a 42 by 48. The sizes are based on the opening of the jaw. So in other words, a 42 by 48 that has a feed opening of 42 inches by 48 inches. In the overhead, st uh, overhead style, they range from a 10 by 24 to as large as a 48 by 60. And you can see from the weights listed that these units are very heavy duty. The output size is very dependent on the material and feed size However, to give you an idea of their capacities, when crushing a typical limestone that weighs about 100 pounds a cubic foot, we can make outputs as small as three quarters of an inch at about 25 tons an hour, up to a large output of 10 inch at about 775 tons per hour. However, these units are just a rule of thumb. We would need to see the particular application to get a, a, an actual capacity. So I can take any questions that you might have now on jaw crushers. Okay, well, that's it for jaw crushers. Thank you for coming, and uh, we'll see you for the next one.